Hey guys, I'm Trish Bendix from After Ellen. We're with Kiyomi McCloskey from uh, Hunter Valentine and Make or Break the Linda Perry Project. Can you believe this was the last week? How are you feeling about it? I feel great. <laughs> you know, well, kind of I do. Okay, so let's start off with just like um, the season's over. What did you think about it overall? I thought it was, um, you know, it was a nice wrap up. It was a good finale. Um, I'm really happy with our song. I'm happy that, you know, the artist that did, I don't even know if it's called winning. I don't know, like, her idea of what this, it's not a competition, right? And I'm not just saying that because, like, we didn't get the record deal, but Linda kept saying that over and over again. Um, but, yeah, happy, super stoked for Amy. Um, and and I always thought Angelie would make it to the very end. And Candice... I love her music, so yeah. Oops, sorry. Is that Laura? <laughs> She's supposed to call me. I know. I'm like, where is she? It's okay though. So we'll just uh, keep going about it because so yeah, the um, Amy ended up getting to, not the deal, but to work with Linda. So and you guys kind of made up at the end. So and and Laura has told us before that you guys are friends and friendly um, after the show. So obviously there's not any too hard feelings. But was that surprising to you at all that she got that chance? Um, uh, I mean, no, I think it's, I, I, like, brought her in this band because I believe in our talent and our ability, you know? Mm -hmm. I used to go to clubs in our hometown of Toronto and go watch her band because I liked her musical style so much. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't surprise me that, um, Linda want, wants to work with her. Um, I think it was a smart choice for Linda to pick a development deal because, like, you, I don't think Amy even knew what she wanted to do at that point, you know. So, you know, let's let's see where we're at in a few months and continue to make music together. And if 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 it seems like you should have a record deal, then she, she'll get one. But it's kind yeah. of left a little bit open, you know. Mm -hmm. It's very smart. Well, somebody on Twitter said that they um, saw that you were in the studio with Linda recently. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Oh, shit. So you're working with her, too. So what can you tell us about it? Well, you know, we're just, like, exploring things musically. And, you know, I can't, I don't, I can't really talk about it that much still. But, um, you know, I talk to Linda all the time um, via text message. And uh, I think that I think it, we've sort of created a lifelong bond, hopefully, and um, we're not really, like, looking for a record deal, which is the irony of this whole thing right now. <laughs> we're, we're, um, we're just trying to make a record and make the best music that we can because it's our fourth album, and um, we want to show the growth that we've had over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, even to you, how important is a record deal even at, right now? I mean, when you win a record deal now on TV versus like when you won it on American Idol like 10 years ago, I feel like it was so different. You don't need one now, you know? Yeah, the thing with all those like winning a record deal um, competitions, they're really, really bad record deals. Mm -hmm. They like own all your shit, and it's really hard to get out of the out of the deal. Um, they're just structured in a way that really aren't. I'm not speaking about the the Linda Perry project. That's that, right. That, yeah, that's Linda's um, label. So she she's much more of an artist friendly label, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about like the American Idols, those kind of yeah. deals. Mm -hmm. They're really hard to get out of. You don't have a lot of control, you know, that kind of thing, so, yeah. I don't, as far as needing one, I don't know, we've had record, we've put out records with labels, and we've put them out without labels, um, it's like, it's like, um, I'll compare it to dating, okay, so, do you need a girlfriend, no, you don't just need one, like, like, if, if the girl is shitty, do you want to just have a girlfriend for the sake of having a girlfriend, no, um, but if, you know, they're a nice, solid lady <laughs> and, um, they move things forward for you in life, like, you know, they make you happy and you are on the same page, yeah. then you're going to want to date her. Totally. So, same with, with a record deal. 
you don't just want to like some people some artists get so wrapped up in their heads about having one um, but then it ends up you know fucking you more than you fucking them yeah <laughs> exactly and nobody wants a girlfriend like that so why would you want a label like that <laughs> no. no but when you find the right my point is when you find that right relationship where, with a label where you're on the same page you can make magic happen but yeah. you know yeah. There are pros and cons to everything. Totally. Well, with the song that you guys wrote with Linda, was that something that you were working on throughout the season? Like, can you tell us about how you uh, chose to, that song specifically to record? Um, actually, you know, we wasted, we didn't waste a lot of time, but we had to go through this whole drama of, like, oh. Is Amy want? Does Amy want to be in the band? Does Amy not want to be in the band? What does Amy want? And like, I really, really just wanted to make music as well. Like, I actually wrote like probably seven or eight songs myself in that house. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think they showed very much of that. But. <laughs> boring to watch people write songs. I mean, like, is that part of it? Do you think it's not as exciting to watch as a viewer? What's that? Do you think it's like maybe, I mean, like, is it boring to watch people write, do you think? I think so, yeah. Unless you're, like, like really into the process of making music, like, <clears throat> you have to, you repeat things over and over again and sound really dumb before it sounds really good, you know, there's, I mean, maybe that's entertaining to watch, I don't know. Um, I forget what the original question was. <laughs> okay, me too. I'm like, um, what was it? Okay, let me see what I'm getting from some people on here because I want to make sure I get those in. Okay, so Faith wants to know, what's the most meaningful thing that you um, you have ever done? That's the end of the question? What would you do for a fan? Oh. <laughs> I thought it was... What's I was like, I'm sure I had it right. So. That I've ever done for a fan? Yeah, or, or that... Would do either one that you have or that you would that you would do. Um, <laughs> we we had a a fan reach out to me and they asked me to play their wedding. Oh, that's so nice. I like arranged like just sort of like a little pro progression for them walking, just me and the acoustic guitar. This is last year. Actually, right around now. That's weird. Um, acoustic guitar when they walked down the aisle, and then I did, like, a, a quiet acoustic set at their um, little party after. That was, I think that was pretty meaningful, hopefully, to them, and, and it was meaningful to me as well, Faith. Oh, that's <laughs> really nice. I loved your um, podcast recently with your friend Sabrina. I died laughing. I think you should go Yeah, and she's She's th trying to get me to start a podcast, so I think it's something that I'm thinking about doing. Cool, yeah, because I'm sure now that the show is over, people will still want to be obsessed with being able to see and know exactly what's going on, so you'll have to do that, so. Yeah, I guess so. I want to do, like, food, music, fashion, I everything. All Basically, of it. Basically, I'm going to do the lesbian version of a gay man's podcast. Perfect. Fashion and yes. fabulousness and everything. <laughs> lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Okay, so Chelsea wants to know, are there any regrets on going on the show after seeing how they portrayed you? Portrayed you. Uh, well, you know, I have this tattoo on my arm, and it says, Je ne regret rien, and that in French, that means um, I regret nothing. I try very hard to live by those words. Um, I don't know. It's really hard to say whether I have regrets because a lot of the things that happened, you don't see the full story, you know? Like, right. It's. I'm not saying that it was like crazy editing, but like, there the whole story is not presented, and there were certain things that happened that you guys will never know. Like, I don't think that it's respectful for me to say some of these things, but um, it it sort of, like, 
skews the viewer's perception of what's going on on the television. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to just let it go and accept it, but I at this point I have I have let it go, so I'm I, I'm trying not to have any regrets. Um, I regret my outfit that Courtney Love insulted me <laughs> over. Was that the pink but, jeans? Why why did you not like that outfit? <laughs> it was just a little much, the whole thing. You know, it's funny because you dress, I feel like, so differently when you're on the show than in real life. Is that true? Um. You know, I go through phases, like, when I'm on stage, I like to wear more, like, rock and roll stuff. Yeah. When I'm in the day-to-day, -day -day, I actually like to dress like a little preppy boy for some reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Also, side note, the best thing that um, they didn't show, <laughs> and I was telling my friends last night, is when Courtney Love was sitting there and she's talking with her cigarette, smoking in the house, and God. she's telling a story and she goes, you know, my manager works with this this little girl. She's very sweet. Um, her name is Sia. <laughs> <laughs> her name is Sia. I'm like, oh, did you mean Sia, the chart-topping... Woman Another making and songwriter, yeah, writing all the hits in the music industry right now. Courtney, is that who you meant as the little girl? Right? Do you think she was saying that because, like, she? This is one thing I wonder. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. But like, you know how Linda Perry and I'm, I mean, Linda Perry and Sia, they know each other and they're friends, but they also are kind of competitors in a way, right? In that realm. So was she trying to say it to like make Linda feel better or something, or was it? I, the, I don't think so. I think it's just that's how she feels. Like she, Courtney Love is Courtney Love. She's up here and she's like new people. She's like ah, some girl Sia. I don't know. I mean, Sia's been around for like more than ten years. Oh, no, like, she loves her own world though, man. She's just in her own world. That's what I mean. I don't think she was trying to throw shade. I think I was wondering. I was curious. That disconnected, and I was like, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, Courtney Love, gotta love her. So she goes, did they show this? I can't remember. Oh, I remember this mansion. I almost bought this house. Yeah, that's so <laughs> funny. She is crazy in, a, in the best way. But yeah. So um, from Courtney or Linda or whoever that you met on the show, was there like one thing that you learned that you were like, this whole experience was worth it because of this? Uh, one thing that I learned. Yeah. You know, the whole thing has just taught me to, um, well, one thing that Linda always says is to look at your intentions. It's kind of like a Buddhist ideology, and make sure that your intentions are in the right place. Mm. You know, because if you're doing something for the wrong reason, it's not going to play out well for you. So, I mean, that can be applied to within a song, within a friendship, within a business relationship, mm. anything. So I think that's one of the biggest lessons that I took away from the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Let's see what else I got for you here. Um, how can we order pins with our online order? Trudy wants to know. Oh, um, yeah, they're not on the website. I will add pins to the website today. Okay. So you look at you asking, you shall receive. I love it. Okay. Um, Alicia wants to know, she said, I see you took some of Linda's advice with a little bit of a new sound with your new song. Is that what we should expect ahead? Um, you know what? I don't even know what you should expect because the songs are like all very versatile and they're that, that definitely has a different vibe to it, but there's still going to be like hard rock songs, there's going to be, you know, I think we're going to record that Stay song. Oh, nice. More ballad, acoustic, piano kind of thing. Okay. I, think this, I want this record to be very well-rounded and just, like, sound different than the last ones, but have a little bit of everything within it. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see. 
When will you stop touring, Silly Face wants to know, because she and her girlfriend, or fiancé, want to set a wedding date with you performing. So <laughs> I'm assuming that's an invitation for you to perform at another wedding. <laughs> I think this is one in Florida that we've already been discussing. Oh, okay. So they just want you to... They're just... I, I'm not sure. I think it is. I can't remember if that's Silly Face or not. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I want to tell Silly Face you're not even on tour yet, so... Silly face. Get married now. Get married today and she'll come over. <laughs> um, um, Alicia wants to know, salty or sweet? Salty. Like what? Um, right. Like, oh, you. I, I mean, I just always prefer salty. Like, oh, don't FaceTime me, Laura. Laura. She wants you to, like, hold her phone up to the... You don't need a FaceTime, dumbass. I'm not going to hold the phone up the whole time. Look at this. Okay. Laura! Can't... Oh, my God. Can you see, Hi. Laura? Hi. Where are you? I'm walking in my neighborhood. <laughs> okay. It's too quiet. You have to call back to Smobile. No. <laughs> okay, Laura. Ask Laura if she can hear me. Is she still on the phone? She's calling back. Oh, okay. I'm like, I want to ask Laura if she has any regrets about the show. I bet you should just say no, though. She, she no. wants me to know. If she didn't have regrets over getting naked in the middle of the streets of Brooklyn on the real L word, do right. you think she has regrets over being like, I just want to play? I just want to play music. Yeah. All right. I think it's louder now. You there? Hey. Trish has a question for you. What's that? Laura, Trish has a question for you. Yes. Okay, Laura, if you can hear me. So do you, um, somebody wanted to know if you guys have any regrets about the show. Kiyomi already said that she doesn't, you know, because she's got that whole tattoo, so she can't um, say she does anymore. Have any regrets, ever. <laughs> so, what about you? Oh, no, I don't regret it whatsoever. I mean, not at all. And, uh, I mean, if you're not, you make decisions, you call us crazy to it, and what? I think it was a, uh, I think it was a good decision. And no, 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 no. Do you have any regrets within the show? Like, oh. not, not. Re do you regret doing it? <laughs> oh no, not at all. <laughs> no. Nope. answer. Good. What's something um that either one of you guys could answer this? What's something that you um wish that they either would have shown that they didn't or that they shown that you were like, why did they show that? Uh. <laughs> um, there was, um, there was really nothing. I mean, like, there were a lot of fun things that happened. Like, we had, uh, we went to the fall spring, um, what's it called, Dr. Joshua Tree, and we had a really great performance there when Amy was still in the band, and um, that night was just it was so much fun. Like, we partied in an RV and just, and they didn't really show any of that. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm kind of glad they didn't show it. <laughs> How often were you guys, um, like, uh, substantially altered on the show? Yeah. Everyone on the whole RV was blacked out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, were there just, like, drinks flowing all the time at Linda Perry's house or what? No, she actually, originally, Linda Perry is sober. Um, originally, she wanted to have the house as a dry house. Oh. Um, but then, I think the producers convinced her that wouldn't be a very good idea. I know, I the producers were like, um, do you want to have a more fun show? Because this is what's going to happen. <laughs> good Lord. Um, what was your, what were your guys' drinks of choice? <laughs> while you were Oh Making yeah, yeah. Jumping over the fence to go get whiskey. That would have been good. That would have been. What was oh, our God. drink of choice? Well, Laura drank an entire bottle of Cavassier. Oh shit. She she tells us she tells the story that she's like, oh man, who drank who drank all the cognac on like the fifth day or something? <laughs> and then she was like in the room by herself, and she's like, shit, I'm the only one drinking this. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it was you, Laura. Uh, I love it. And, you know, it, it, was, it was actually 
Tennessee. Oh, sorry. Um, Magic. Who wouldn't want to go on that show then? I'll go write some songs if I can have a new bottle every time I wake up. Mine was wine, by the way. I'm a big wine person. Okay. I like that. Um, let's see what else um, we have. People, well, somebody, um, Alicia just wants to say one more thing. Thank you for the interviews, honesty, music, and being appreciative to your fans and your charm, she said. Oh, thank you so much. Awesome. What charm? Uh huh. Um, <laughs> Whatever. Okay, somebody, whatever. Um, when is the new album going to be released? I mean, I know you're writing it, but do you have an idea? Like, do you think, like, 2015, like, you know? Yeah, it's going to be in the new year for sure. Um, we still have a lot to, to get out, you know, especially after the last couple months. There's been a lot, a, a bit of a emotional roller coaster. Thanks, Twitter. <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah I think there's like a whole other experience that I'd like to write about personally mm -hmm. that I would like to have on this record from, from that whole thing mm -hmm. what's the craziest rumor um, that you've heard about yourself since being on uh, TV oh that Laura and I get it on <laughs> Laura? Yeah, no, that's a pretty gross rumor. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, I mean, I, I saw, I've seen some things just mostly that people say that you guys are bullies, and I know that you're not bullies, but it, come, it might come off that way to some people that they don't know you. So um, what do you think about that when people say that to you? I think that's dumb. We're actually about to put out an anti-bullying video um, oh. for, for younger kids that are like going through difficult times in high school so I think it's pretty ironic that we're bullies mm -hmm. I don't know it's just it's, it's just it's simply not true it's simply <laughs> not true I, I know I'm just asking because I saw I saw that on Facebook and I was like that's so weird but I guess if they don't know but I mean there's not really any time that you were shown bullying Amy specifically that's why I thought it was kind of interesting but Anyway. I think it was like they think that, and and even Amy was confused. Like when I when we came in after the management call, obviously it was very heated. We were very upset. Yeah. Uh, but I there was like a part of it they didn't show, and I was like, you might want to look into your visa because it does it's not um, valid anymore. And then she got upset. She didn't. And I went up to her afterwards when she was upset, and I was like, I didn't mean we're taking away your visa. Right. When you apply for a visa, you apply under a company name, mm -hmm. and you have to show proof that you're working for that company name. The yeah. company name is Hunter Valentine. She's on an a national television show working not as Hunter Valentine. Right. I don't think that they would even show any of that stuff because it's so, like, technical and business-like, you know? Yeah. But, um, I was basically saying, like, if you're on this show and you're working and you're making music and you're making money from it and it's not under the company, you don't want to get in trouble and get deported because your yeah. visa isn't valid anymore. Right. There is, she, is an interesting is explanation. Yeah. <laughs> She's still living in America? Or, I mean, uh, U.S.? Yeah, she does. She got it all sorted out. But, you know, that's a real-life thing that we have to deal with because we're Canadians and we, you know, you, it's not the easiest thing to live over here um, as a Canadian. You have to have everything sorted out very, very uh, clearly. Legitimately. Yeah, legitimately because you can get blacklisted. Anyway, it's boring stuff. I'm surprised that they put it in the show yeah. um, because... It's it's boring, but they made it not boring because they made me be like, your visa is not valid. I'm kicking you out of the country. Get out of here, right? So no. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome that you guys said you're gonna uh, do stay because people keep asking um what uh 
if that's going to be on the album. So you think you'll be recording that for the album then? I think it's a really good song. Like uh, Laura wrote a really beautiful piano part, um, and I think it shows a very different side. So it'll be cool to have it on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I like that song. I think her name is Allegria. I might be totally butchering this. Allegria <laughs> wants to know, what's your best day or memory? In life? Yeah. <laughs> Laura, <laughs> you want to go? Oh, you want to take this? Man. Oh, I have, like, R-rated, and then I have, like, just in general. I just don't know where to go with this. Do R-rated. <laughs> no. I'll just say that there was one day that was absolutely amazing. Uh, but then... What? I don't, I don't know. Like, uh, I'd have to say probably... This is really hard. I don't know. You go first. I have... I'm at a loss for words with this one. My best day or favorite memory in my... Existence is the question. You can just pick one that <laughs> is like you were like, this was a really great thing that happened. I don't know. I didn't ask the question. Um, okay. I think it goes back, and I think I said this in a chat before. A really great day in memory, I'll take it to with the band, um, was, oh, there's two actually, was playing World Pride Toronto this year because there were, how many people were there? Like 300,000 people or something? Yeah. And then the, our face was on the giant jumbotron. Wow. And it was, uh, you know, we we have lived in New York for a little while now, like sort of back and forth, and going to your hometown and and playing that to that many people is really, and they're like happy that you've gotten been that successful. Yeah. There's a big amount of pride that comes with that, and it's you know it was it was awesome. Do you guys, um, when you guys play at those shows? Oh, sorry, Laura, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, there was a, my, obviously it can be foreign country, like Japan, for me, like Tokyo, the very first time, not even the second time. <laughs> you mentioned how we played Summer Sonic the second time, but the first time we played was, for me, probably one of the most exciting. Even though it was like a smaller type show, I feel like we really killed it. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. It so good. It was good. <laughs> have you guys ever had, um, like, when you go home to Toronto and you're playing a big show like that, have you ever had somebody that used to be, like, a hater in your life or, like, an ex-girlfriend or something come to the show and, like, try to buddy-buddy up to you again because they're they're like, oh, you're doing some big things? No, because they know that we're bullies and they wouldn't dare. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't no. dare. Toronto. Um, She's still they, fucking it, them. No, I'm just <laughs> She's got good relationships with all her ex girlfriends. Yeah. No, they, they all just, they do, if they're even still in Toronto, um, they, if, they usually come out, actually, and they yeah. support and they have a great time and they'll let me know, oh, we're going to come to your show, and they bring a bunch of people, and they're right. very still supportive. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Well, I know you guys have a tour coming up, and so you probably want to tell people a little bit about it. Um, so what do you want people to know about the tour, besides that they can go to HunterValentine.com and see the tour date? Um, I haven't been this excited about a tour in a really long time. Um, the last, it's called the Lady Killer Tour. It's a tour that we did how many years ago, Laura? Uh, about two and a half. Two and a half years ago. No. Maybe three. Three I'm years like, ago. Yeah, because... Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is before Collide and Conquer, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we did it about three years ago, a little more than three years ago, and it was with Sick of Sarah and originally Vanity Theft. And we just sort of created this really cool vibe on tour with these girl bands, and we're trying to relive it. We want to bring it back, and um, I think that we'll end up probably doing two legs of it. This is the first leg, so if we miss your city... Um, on this run, just keep your eyes open because we're going to come back, do some recording, and then go out again. And um, It's going to be great. Sick of Sarah are some of our really good friends. They're hilarious, and I don't know. It's going to be a great, great 
show to watch. What is back to that other question of like best time of your life? I'd have to say now again, the Lady Killer Tour, tour Part One. So Lady Killer Tour Part Two is just gonna blow out of the water, I think. Awesome. Well, I have a, a very serious question, which is, do you guys still have regional reps? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm going to say of course. That, I, that I am taking more applications and uh, this Lady Killer Tour, no, this is not to produce No, it but, doesn't. Uh, there are a lot of positions that need to be filled in Laura's. I know, right? There's some girls out there listening right late now, like, how can I get into this? How do I apply to be a regional rep? <laughs> you know, um, when you sign up, you get a free T-shirt. See, and that's everybody wants a T-shirt. <laughs> free. You really do get a free T-shirt. <laughs> I love it. Gonna have like, new shirts for the. Are you gonna have like new like uh, merch and stuff too on your tour? Yeah, we're working on a a fall hoodie. Ooh, and, very nice. Uh, a beanie, and um, maybe a new shirt or two. Oh, okay. Um, so when does it start? When does the tour kick off? September 25th in Philadelphia. Awesome. Cool. Was well, there anything else that you guys want to say about the show or the tour or anything else? Actually, we're going to be playing Sheetonism this Sunday. Yeah, are you coming, well, Trish? Oh, I'm busy this weekend, but I'm, I know you guys will have fun. But why are you going to Key West? What happened? Um, so It wasn't our choice. Like, we want... Uh, the promoters had to cancel the show. I don't know. There are some complications yeah. with one of their uh, supporters, I guess. I don't know. It sucks. Key West is a great place, but, but what Vegas. Would have, been, would have been sipping on some kind of beverage right now and lying on the beach. I know. Oh, well, you'll be in Vegas sipping on plenty of beverages this weekend, so that'll be fun. And then what? Are you going back to New York after that? Yeah, we have more writing to do, and then we got, and we have to get ready for this tour. So, cool. Well, yeah, we want to thank you for doing these hangouts with us, Trish. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'm glad that um, we could make this happen every week, and that people hopefully got all their questions answered. But I'm sure if you do a podcast, or as they see you on the road, they'll be able to ask you more questions and keep up with you on Twitter and the like. So, for sure. All right, thanks, Laura. Hey, thank you so much, Trish. It was it's been a, a lot of fun talking to you every Yeah, keep in touch, both of you, okay? Bye. Bye.